I first met Brian Cole on a windswept mountain slope in rural Afghanistan in 2002, working with his Afghan interpreter, Haya Det, to deliver school supplies and food to local villagers. We're serving as a stopgap until the non-governmental organizations can get here. Nearly 20 years after we met, I located Cole in Kentucky, where he was working as a park ranger after retiring from the military. How y'all doing? Last July, he was closely watching the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan. Cole said he had no regrets about his service in Afghanistan, except one. He'd lost touch with high debt. I'm hoping I can track him down. Why? I loved him. I mean. Cole credits high debt with saving his soldiers' lives in many dangerous situations. What will you do if you can get him here? Give him a place to live. How do you think he would appreciate that? Oh, he'd love it. We talked about him coming to the United States. Around the same time last year, U.S. Army Brigadier General Michael Greer watched the news at Kabul's airport amid the U.S. withdrawal. He was concerned about the fate of the Afghan translator who worked with him during a 2004 to 2005 deployment named Hidayat. And one evening I saw a news report that the Taliban were going to stop allowing people to come to the airport. And so I texted Hidayat and I told him to go to the airport immediately to take the letters that he had and show that to an American. He didn't respond to that text. That's because Hidayat, whose full name is Hidayatullah Hisari, and his family of six were desperately trying to enter the Kabul airport, which was guarded by U.S. Marines. I told them, you need help. He asked me, can you speak English? I told them, I am interpreter. I used to work for the nine years with the U.S. Army. Amid the crush of thousands of Afghans trying to flee the country, the Marines accepted Hisari's help. I did the interpretation for five hours. Finally, I asked one of the captain. I told him I am also used to work with the U.S. Army. Please help me. Just inches away from safety, Hisari made a final desperate phone call to Greer. I woke up to the phone ringing. The caller ID was an Afghan number. I could hear crowd noise. I could hear background static, and then the call dropped. Almost immediately, the phone rang again, and, and it was Hadai. He said, I'm at the gate. Hassari gave the phone to a nearby U.S. Marine. I identified myself and, and told the Marine that, that Hadai had a letter from me uh, and that he was who he said he was. Uh, the Marines said, I, I, got, I got it, uh, and then the call ended. It took two more days before Hassari texted Greer to confirm they were safely inside the airport. Over the next months, the Hisari family processed through Ramstein Air Base, Germany and Fort Dix, New Jersey, before arriving in Clearwater, Florida in March. The process to obtain a special immigrant visa, or SIV, which Hisari was initially denied, has complicated their journey. Then in December, an immigration attorney working on his appeal tracked down Brian Cole wondering if he was the same army officer who worked with Hidayatullah Hisari, seen in this footage in 2002. The man Greer knew as Hidayat was actually the same translator Cole had been desperately searching for, the man he fondly referred to as Hayadet. Both Cole and Greer are now helping Hisari complete the visa process. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, I'm in your parking lot. I'm trying to figure out which is your building. Yeah, yeah, I'm behind you. Oh, man. After being separated for nearly 20 years, and after months of agonizing uncertainty, Cole made the 11-hour drive from Kentucky to Florida for a long overdue reunion. Man, nice it's great you. to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah, great yeah. to see you. I'm glad yeah. you're here. Man. Thanks a lot. When we worked together in Afghanistan, his son was about the same age as my daughter was. It's kind of neat to see him now as a 20-year-old grown man. After 20 years, we meet him here. I'm very happy with this. This is a long time. He is my best friend. A friendship forged in war decades ago that endures today as Hisari begins a new life in the country of those he once served and protected. I think he's more honorable than about anybody I've ever met or worked with. Kane Fairbaugh, VOA News, Clearwater, Florida.